if you've been following the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, you will have noticed an uptick in reference to these US-made F-16 warplanes that are on their way to Ukraine. Ukrainian pilots are supposedly in the process of training. I thought now would be a good time to talk about the F-16, the inability of Ukraine to effectively integrate this into its armed forces, use it effectively in, or I should say above the battlefield and how this is going to end up like all the other supposed wonder weapons that the West has introduced, sent to Ukraine and demonstrated will not make any difference. They're not addressing the fundamental problems causing Ukraine to lose this conflict. And until they do so, Ukraine will continue losing the conflict, no matter what weapon system the West sends Ukraine. And I want to start with this relatively recent New York Times article. Ukraine could deploy F-16s as soon as July, but only a few. Countries promised the fighter jets last year, but delivering them and training pilots has proved complex. Who could have imagined that? Who could have imagined that? Uh, Ukraine may start with as few as six out of about 45 pledged. Russia has hundreds of warplanes operating in and around Ukrainian airspace. Uh, this is going to be a handful. Even if they received all 45 planes, do they even have enough pilots to op operate them all? How many can they operate at any given time and what difference is it really going to make? The article also says 12 pilots so far, fewer than a full squadron, are expected to be ready to fly F-16s in combat by this summer after 10 months of training in Denmark, Britain, and the United States. But by the time the pilots return to Ukraine, as few as six F-16s will have been delivered out of about 45 of the fighter jets that European allies have promised. Again, a handful of F-16s that Ukrainian pilots have zero experience operating in combat versus hundreds of Russian warplanes, as well as one of the most advanced integrated air defense networks on Earth. It doesn't really seem like it's going to turn out well for Ukraine. New York Times continues, nonetheless, their highly anticipated arrival over the battlefield will come not a moment too soon. Russia has employed more aggressive air support to gain ground in eastern Ukraine in recent weeks, using its warplanes to send guided glide bombs over long distances into the Ukrainian front lines. And Ukraine is desperate for more weapons of any kind as it runs low on artillery rounds and other ammunition while Republicans in Congress hold up additional American military aid. The F-16s would likely come armed with short and medium range missiles and bombs, partially making up for a shortage of ground-based munitions. That is ridiculous. There's only going to be six at most 45. How could that make up for a lack of ground-based weapon systems, especially systems like artillery. They never explain. The New York Times, Western political and military leaders, as well as Western analysts and commentators, they all seem to think that these F-16s are going to make up for the gap in Ukraine's dwindling uh, air defense network. It's going to somehow hold off these glide bombs that Russia is employing in larger and larger numbers and unfortunately it's not going to help address any of these. Uh, most likely the F-16 is going to be used to launch air-launched cruise missiles like the Storm Shadow, which they only have uh, a small number of and can only be used for symbolic attacks on, on Russian targets that as I've explained in the past, do not happen frequently enough uh, do not make a big enough impact to make any sort of strategic difference, not in the short term, not in the long term. And then the New York Times talks about this, this training, the ongoing training. By normal standards, the training of Ukraine's pilots on sophisticated Western jets has proceeded at lightning speed, compressing years of classroom learning, simulations, and flight exercises into months. Does that sound like a good idea? Uh, even so, it is moving more slowly than Ukraine and its allies had hoped, as pilots trained on Soviet airplanes and tactics have had to get up to speed on the English language and Western military practices to make effective use of the F-16s. If this is what they're doing, it will be impossible for them to ever make effective use of F-16s. Uh, how does this sound any different than what 
the Collective West did in terms of transferring Western main battle tanks to Ukraine, compressing the trading down into just a few weeks instead of the, the months or year plus that it actually takes to build up uh, uh, tank units um, to effectively operate on the battlefield. And I've explained many times how integrating a new weapon system into an armed force can take years to do. The Bayraktar TB2 drone, for example, uh, Ukraine acquired from Turkey, and they spent years integrating it into its military before they began using it uh, in the middle of the special military operation. Russia ended up uh, shooting most of them down. We never hear anything about TB2 Bayraktar drones, and that is a weapon system Ukraine actually did have enough time to integrate. It still made no difference. Compressing training for main battle tanks for even infantry ends in catastrophe. It will end in catastrophe for a weapon system like the F-16. I want to point your attention to this article. Actually, I have two articles that elaborate on the training. This is from Air and Space Forces magazine. This is an article from August 2022. Romania is a model for training Ukraine's pilots to fly F-16s. And if you if you read and absorb the meaning of this article, you will understand that it is a good model. And if you try to accelerate it, things will turn out badly. It says, Ukrainian Air Force has withstood six months of war against much larger and more sophisticated Russian force. But US lawmakers worry Russia could gain air superiority as the war grinds on unless Ukrainian pilots are equipped and trained to fly modern Western aircraft such as F-16s. Romania, a NATO member, a NATO member, offers a case study for how that could go. Its Air Force is, is completing a transition from Soviet-era MiG-21s to U.S.-built F-16s, providing a model for training pilots for the switch. According to U.S. airmen involved with the training, the U.S. Air Force's Air Education and Training Command even has a course for partner and ally nation pilots that could be tailored for Ukraine. Romania joined the NATO Partnership for Peace in 1994, shortly after independence, and became a full NATO member 10 years later. Each step was a shift to the Western way of warfare, from trained pilots and maintainers to required infrastructure to a boneyard of spare aircraft. Romania has been working on its transition to the F-16 for nearly a decade. Does Ukraine have a decade to make this transition? And if not, how are they going to follow the Romanian model. Even we struggle at this point, and we started enhancing and getting F-16s like seven or eight years ago, and we're still not there yet. That was Romanian Air Force pilot, Captain Alexandru Barakko. Then it talks about the specifics, uh, all of the steps in the training. And I ju I'm just going through all of this to show you realistically how much training goes into doing this versus the hand waving that many western analysts are performing when they try to explain how the f-16 will somehow be a game changer it says the u.s air force spokesperson said foreign countries seeking to train fighter pilots in the united states would typically begin with a few weeks in the t-6 trainer aircraft before spending a few months flying the faster t-38 once the training is complete, the pilot can enroll in the basic course for combat pilots. The majority of the course uses the F-16C model, since most pilots will be flying single-seat aircraft when they return home. Graduating students reach a wingman level and are expected to continue flying with close supervision for 500 hours. How much time is 500 hours? If you flew eight hours a day, it would take you over two months to reach 500 hours of flight time. That's how long that is. And then there's this other article that goes into even greater detail. This is from the war zone. This is how long it would really take Ukraine's pilots to convert to F-16. So even in, among the Western media, there are skeptics about sending the F-16 and having it uh, be, become a game changer. They're explaining the limitations that exist in reality. It says, for experienced Ukrainian fighter pilots, a type conversion to the F-16 could resemble a typical FTU transition conversion course known as TX. 
This is traditionally applied to air crew who are moving from one type of fighter aircraft to another or perhaps senior officers who need to fly multiple types. A tailored transition course that incorporates a grounding in Western systems and standard operating procedures could be the type of syllabus that a future Ukrainian F-16 pilot coming from the fulcrum or flanker would need. For a pilot with around 500 hours experience in a Western fighter, but that had never previously flown the F-16, someone transitioning from the Hornet, for example, without any breaks, working weekends, etc. They need 69 days to learn everything to safely employ the Viper in air-to-air -air or air-to-ground roles, commented an experienced F-16 instructor. That's assuming they speak good English because that's the language we teach in. Those 69 days include six flights learning to fly the jet and land it, about 15 flights of air to air, but if they're done, if they've done a lot of this before, you might get that down to 10, from 15 to 10 flights. The between six and nine air to surface missions, which would include a basic ability to employ laser guided bombs and GPS guided joint direct attack munitions, JDAMs. That would give them a basic wingman level understanding. And that's assuming they are already familiar with the complex weapons such as the AIM, 120 AMRAM, advanced medium range air-to-air -air missile. They would also need to take in 210 hours of academics and 10 to 20 simulator events. It's, it's, it's very involved operating a military aircraft or an aircraft of any kind. It is much more involved than a main battle tank, which is a lot more complex than I think many people imagine. The article continues, it says, you can't do that fast. Even doing two sims a day means 10 days straight. You can't do that kind of thing fast. So those 69 days would mean the pilot could potentially employ the jet safely in a tactical training environment. Flying in combat is a whole different story. Going into combat against Su-35 or even Su-27 in contested airspace, now you're talking about years of experience. You can't do that with a brand new guy who has seen everything once. You can have all the capabilities of the jet, but if the pilot doesn't know how to use it correctly, then that's useless. So for a pilot coming from a MiG-29, having to learn a brand new pilot vehicle interface where everything looks different, use weapons that they've only ever read about to give them three months training, then toss them into combat. That's a tall order. That's what the article says. And I would say that it's criminally negligent. That pilot is going to die and he's going to lose his aircraft. Well, Ukraine will use its aircraft. This article from the war zone is not even talking about the much larger challenge of sustaining the F-16 in Ukraine. Where are they going to operate? Who's going to maintain them? However, going back to the New York Times article, they actually do cover this. And again, it's another tremendous wake up call for people who think these F-16s are just gonna go get transferred to Ukraine and they're going to turn the tide of the conflict. So getting back to the New York Times article, it says about 50 Ukrainian technicians are being trained in Denmark to support and repair the jets and handle their weapon packages. Given that the F-16 is so complex that it generally takes eight to 14 people to maintain each one. Officials said Western defense contractors would have to accompany the jets into Ukraine and remain with them until there were enough Ukrainian crews to maintain them properly, a process that could take years. And the need to repair Ukraine's aging and war-damaged military runways could further delay the F-16's entry into the war. It could prevent it from ever even entering into the conflict at all. This all brings me to this F-16 training hub that has been set up in neighboring Romania. I'm also going to talk about suspicion. There's no evidence, at least none that I have seen yet, but it is a possibility that these F-16s might never actually be based in Ukraine. They may be based in Romania and simply fly into Ukrainian airspace to perform missions and then fly back to the safety of, say, Romania once they're done. And then they could receive all the maintenance and repair and sustainment in Romania where they have the personnel to do that, the NATO personnel to do that. They may even have NATO pilots operating the F-16s. That is also a possibility. I'll get into all of that in just a moment. 
Let's talk about this training center though. This is from Reuters. Romania opens F-16 pilot training hub for NATO allies, Ukraine. This was from November, 2023. European F-16 training center is hosted at a Romanian military air base near the southeastern town of Fetesti and is using F-16 jets provided by the Netherlands with training support from Lockheed Martin and its contractors. So it will be possible to train F-16 pilots. They can fly these F-16s. They can also bring in contractors to maintain these F-16s, all without having to worry about Russia striking these facilities with long-range cruise missiles or drones, which is why a lot of people suspect that it's possible they'll be flown out of a facility like this, if not this facility specifically. Because do we really believe that it's possible to transfer these F-16s to Ukraine, have them based in Ukraine, operating there, maintained and repaired there in Ukraine, and also operate on a regular basis uh, along or even beyond the line of contact? Does anyone really think that that is possible? And this brings me to this statement that I've talked about frequently now. The Department of Defense Office of Inspector General, this was from February 20th, 2024, evaluation of sustainment strategies for the Patriot Air Defense Systems transferred to the Ukrainian Armed Forces and evaluation of the Department of Defense's sustainment plan for Bradley Stryker and Amram's armored weapon systems. Uh, the evaluation, it's really the evaluation of a lack of a sustainment plan. It said the, the, the Department of Defense had not developed or implemented a plan to sustain the Bradley Strikers and Abrams armored vehicles or the phased array tracking radar to intercept on target the Patriot Air Defense System provided to the Ukrainian Armed Forces between January and September 2023. These reports concluded that without deliberate and planned sustainment support, including proper spare parts, ammunition, and maintenance support, the Ukrainians would not be able to maintain these weapon systems. They weren't able to. The, the weapons were, are, were, are being wiped off the battlefield. It has been a complete catastrophe. How are they going to coordinate all of this for F-16s, a, a weapon system many times more complex? I've not seen a, anywhere a convincing argument that it can be done. That is why I'm bringing up all of this. That's why a lot of people suspect that NATO is going to be operating these F-16s and they'll simply be painted with Ukrainian colors. And it's not entirely based in speculation. We have headlines like this. British soldiers on the ground in Ukraine, says German military leak. Kremlin claims audio of officers discussing UK help with missiles shows involvement of collective West. British soldiers are on the ground in Ukraine helping Kiev's forces fire long-range storm shadow missiles, according to a leak in Russia media of a top-secret call involving German Air Force officers. And this has been later confirmed. This was a real conversation between German Air Force officers. The Kremlin said the leak demonstrated the direct involvement of the collective West in the war in Ukraine, while former British defense ministers expressed frustration with the German military in response to the revelations. Let's say that NATO troops are in Ukraine and they are operating all of this Western equipment. Has it helped? Has it made any difference in Ukraine's favor? The answer is very clearly no. And again, it has been a co complete catastrophe. Even if they are all NATO forces masquerading as Ukrainians operating this equipment, they're doing it without the, the massive large scale back end required to sustain a, a Western military, a huge network of logistics required to sustain, repair, maintain, uh, supply these vehicles with the fuel, spare parts, ammunition that they all require to operate effectively on the battlefield simply is not set up in Ukraine. It could not be set up covertly in Ukraine. And I don't think that it can be set up in Ukraine for F-16s either. And uh, one last Let's just take uh, one last look here. This is from the Rand Corporation. This was October, 2023. F-16s are no magic bullet for Ukraine, but they are a game changer with the right munitions. Well, I would say no, they're not a game changer even with the right munitions. A lot of these munitions mentioned in this article, radar, 
anti-radar missiles, uh, uh, glide bombs, air-to-air -air missiles. This has all been transferred over to Ukraine already and has made no difference. There's no reason to think putting it on an F-16 piloted by a, a Ukrainian with zero experience operating is going to make any, any significant change in that. But this is what it concludes by saying, will F-16s win the war for Ukraine? No. Only ground victories and unacceptable Russian losses will force Putin to negotiate. The most important support to Ukraine is still artillery, medical equipment, infantry weapons, ground vehicles, and drones. And the West is incapable of providing any of these in the necessary quantities for Ukraine to match or exceed Russian firepower. So it, will, it is losing the war. It will continue losing the war. That is the fundamental problem Ukraine faces in this conflict. The West is incapable of addressing that, papering it over with wonder weapons like the F-16, like Western main battle tanks, like Western air defense systems, long-range air launch cruise missiles, the Attackums, HIMARS, all of these systems trying to paper over this fundamental problem, crisis, uh, is not going to solve the problem. Even if NATO forces were to intervene directly with full support of their logistical networks, I think they would still be facing significant challenges. They're, they're still going to be out of artillery ammunition. They will still lack significant air defense protection. Uh, they'll, they'll be low on many weapon systems and the ammunition that they fire. They will still have this problem and they will still be ground down by a Russia capable of outproducing them in all of these areas. And if NATO does intervene directly in Ukraine as, as frustration and desperation begin to set in, if they do, they're going to have to commit assets, including the U.S., they're going to have to commit assets that they had wanted to use for the war they're trying to provoke with China. They're trying to provoke a very similar war with China for all the same reasons. The U.S. sees Russia and China as peer, near-peer adversaries that need to be eliminated in order to maintain U.S. hegemony across the planet. And if they cannot succeed in Ukraine, if they have to intervene directly in Ukraine, they are going to completely take off the table any possibility of fighting and winning against China in the Asia Pacific, which is it even, which includes greater insurmountable odds than, than the West is realizing they face in Ukraine right now at the moment. The West is pursuing an unsustainable irrational foreign policy and until it realizes that it changes course adopts a more rational foreign policy based on the multipolar world based on finding its place in the multipolar world it's going to continue painting itself into this very very dangerous corner i will continue covering this conflict in ukraine as well as u.s military aggression in the middle east and also its provocations in asia pacific very closely because again, it's all connected. Uh, until then, if you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. Check the video description below for other places you can find and follow my work. Uh, I also, in the video description below, place all of the links that I referenced in this video, as well as for ways you can help support my work. I do not monetize my YouTube channel or any of my social media platforms. If you want to support my work, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee and also through Patreon. Whether you're supporting me through one-time donations, donations month to month, or even if you have no money to spare and you're just helping share my work with others online, that is all greatly appreciated. That is what makes this work possible. So thank you. And as always, thank you for watching.